I am rocking with B Rock. I'm rocking with B Rock. I'm, I'm rocking with B Rock. Tessie and I are rocking with B Rock. We're rocking with B Rock. We are shotgun superstars. Rocking with B Rock. I'm Chrissy. And I'm Jim. And we're, we're rocking with B Rock. Rocking with B Rock! We are Asphalt Valentine and you are rocking with B Rock. Rocking, rocking with, with B Rock! Ready to rock with B Rock! Hey, this is Paul Liddell from Dangerous Toys and Dirty Looks, and I'm rocking with B Rock. rock. I'm rocking with B Rock. With B Rock, and I'm looking forward to fight. Hey, it's Jeff from American Jet Set. And you're rocking with B-Rock. Because you're smart. You got good taste. What's up, everybody? I'm back. Here we go. It's Thursday. Thursday with me. Hey, I'm your Thursday night. So uh, we're going to get right into this today. Uh, we got It's, it's going to be a lot to talk about. After I got dived in and started looking at this fella, Greg Fox, uh, there's a lot to talk about. I mean, I don't even have to write things down. I started writing things down. And it was like, there's too much to write down. And we're just going to roll with this tonight. Uh, very interesting. Uh, he's got a lot going on. He's done a lot. And he's got a lot going on at the moment that you may not know about. But you're going to know about it when we're done. So, without hesitation, let's just bring him in. Mr. Greg Fox. How are we doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing fantastic. You know, Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to nice to meet you. Uh, I've heard uh, about RRO uh, Renaissance Rock Orchestra. I, you know, with like with everything else, you know, there's so much coming at you all the time. You, we we right. complain that there's never any new music, but believe me, there's so much uh, out there. It's, it's hard true. to it, it, you can't get it all. So yeah. then, you're, um, I guess, uh, associate. I, I don't know. What she is, her name is Tabitha. Got Tabitha, a hold of me. Yeah, Tabitha Rock. She's awesome. She's the one that kind of hooked us together. Yes. And uh, she does a lot of great work for me. And uh, she's a great promoter. And she's been, you know, very well connected in the industry with lots of people all sure. around the country. And she's been doing a great job of connecting me to this person and that person. And and thank God I'm excited right. about this. And yeah. she, she got a hold of me. And next thing you know, I'm looking at the... I'm, checking out RRO and I'm like, Oh my God. And I dive into you to, you know, I knew your name. I, you know, we know someone's name and a little bit about them, but you don't dive yeah. in. Well, you know, dive. And I'm the same way. I'm the same way. You know, I know there's a lot of new music out there. I almost have to have my friends and people bring things to me because I'm, I went to rock orchestra bubble. You know, I spent my life in that world. I spent so much time writing and composing and, and recording and, and getting contents and, and working on new shows and things like that, that I don't have time to go out and find it myself. And I know a lot of other people are like that too, but oh, there yeah. is a lot out there. And it's the same thing you were talking about. It's like, you know, you hear about a thing, you kind of see a little blurb on it on Facebook right. or Instagram or something. You're going, wow, that looks kind of cool. I got to check that out. But you never get back to it. And uh, so years go by while this thing keeps growing and developing, which has been what's happening with Renaissance Rock Orchestra. I'm telling you. So I'm, I'm glad you. you're in the pocket finally, Mike. You're in the game. Finally, thanks to Tabitha. She reached out. She's like, hey, you want to interview him? I'm like, sure. So then uh -huh. I get I get to diving in and I'm like, wow, you know. Nice. We got to, we gotta, you know, we got to, you know, do this. Uh -huh. Now. Going back to childhood, okay. Yeah. What were your musical interests? What first got you started into music? What was your interest at the time? Yeah. My mine yeah. was eighty one. I was I found Judas Priest. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful start, you, man. I was way into Judas Priest back in the in the day too. Back in those days, I was living in Bremerton, Washington, and I had this amazing band uh, called Ictus I C T U S, which is like a repeating. A rhythm pattern in a beat is called the ictus and mm -hmm. we had this chick singer lorelei that was just unbelievable and uh i was doing a lot of shows with that that band we actually toured around the entire west coast back in the day 
great, great guitar player, Mark Black, a uh, fantastic band. And we really took over the Seattle scene in a big way. And we were doing all those really great, it was a cover band mostly. Right. Although we did several originals and we ended up being on a couple albums in the Northwest uh, called uh, uh, Best of the Northwest, uh, the Pacific nice. Northwest albums, uh, Best of the Northwest. And one of our songs was a song called Looking Out for Number One that did really well. And a song that I wrote called The Ice Age Cometh. And these were both in our repertoire when we went touring about and doing shows. We were known back then as having the biggest sound system, the biggest light show of any rock band anywhere in the Northwest. Nice. And it's kind of cool because our sound guy and our light guy from back in the day were brothers. Alex Raphael and Sammy Raphael, they ended up going out and doing Metallica shows in Europe and Def Leppard shows in Europe. They did uh, lots of Queensryche shows. Uh, Alex is still out with uh, Jeff Tate on Jeff's new tour. And, oh, he's fantastic. Uh, yeah, and I just saw Sammy oh run lights with Jeff Cantrell out at the House of Blues Saturday night, and he absolutely just killed it. The light yeah. show was unbelievable. Sammy right. Raphael, you rock that show. And both of those guys still run sound and lights for me in Renaissance Rock Orchestra. Nice. So many years later. I mean, we've been working together for well over 40 years now. So it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Yeah, so I started off in the Seattle scene. And my very first band was that band, Ictus, that, that did nice. really, really well. But uh, originally, I got into music from my family. I come from a very, very musical family, a very church oriented family. So we were singing, we were, were in quartets. I was playing piano and also playing violin, which, which I did back yeah. in the day. I was in orchestra and stuff as a kid, but it was through my parents, very music, musical family. My dad was the choir director. My mom was the church organist and my sister and I, when I was five, and she was three. We were up in front of the church singing this little light of mine. Nice. <laughs> so can that's we, where I think we could rock that too. Yeah, you can rock true. this little I light of mine. Tape, I still have a tape somewhere that I would love to put on a record. Me and my sister singing the light of mine when we were just, just oh, that's children. Fantastic. So that would be kind of a fun thing to use. But it would be. Uh, so I was very instrumental in music programs in school. You know, there was always music program. So I was singing in the choir. I was playing in the orchestra, got awards in, in both of those categories, boy of the year in choir and, nice. and uh, something about orchestra too. So I was all involved with that. We, we would go to state uh, and do string quartets. I played a lot of Vivaldi and things like that in the string quartets and, and string trios. So I had this huge orchestra background, which is where I developed this love of orchestras and symphonies and, and that string sound, which I use in many, many of my pieces, not all of them, but a lot of the pieces in Renaissance Rock Orchestra, once you really delve into the catalog and the discography, you're going to hear these, these sweeping orchestral package, passages and and this big, huge symphonic sound, which is a part of, oh, yeah. of this symphonic metal thing that right. is Renaissance Rock Orchestra, which is Greg Fox, because I write it all and I own the project and create all the material. But and it so, is fantastic. I so mean, when I first started getting into rock and roll, you know, I was from a church family. So I really, my parents didn't really like this rock and roll thing at all. No. So, so I wasn't really supposed to be listening to that. But of course, it's everywhere. You know, it's on the oh, radio. Yeah. You got to be a rebel. I loved it and fell in love with it. But when I really started delving into it, <clears throat> let's see, you know, we'll start from scratch. My very first record, I think, was a Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young record. Oh, nice. Marrakesh Express, of all things. I think right. Loved the song, you know, really old cool stuff. Oh, hell yeah. Really got into Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and, and then into Net Crosby, Stills, Nash Young. That was a cool thing. But let's see, I moved quickly from there into the Beatles was way into the Beatles uh, younger and uh, oh, let's see what else. And then of course to Led Zeppelin, my all time. Oh, well, of course. you know, it's very easy to say that Led Zeppelin is my all time favorite band. And in many ways they are, but being a, a pianist that started taking piano lessons at five years old and it had like 12 years of lessons before I, I ended up going into school into college, you know, where I, I ended up getting my music degree. So, uh, so yeah, that was my course. And, and when I was uh, 
when I was in college, everybody else there was going to be a teacher. You know, you take, you go to get your music degree to be a teacher. And, and I always like going, no, man, I'm going to perform. I'm going to be an artist. This will be on that stage. You watch. Yeah. But to, to wind up back in, in high school again, you know, I started writing songs in junior high because I'd been playing piano since I was five years old and singing. Now you started with piano, right? I started with piano at five. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Wow. Five and years old. Wow. So, of course, in church, as it, you know, as I was going and in, getting into junior high school, me and my buddies would get together and, you know, another guy that played guitar, another guy that played bass, and we'd start writing songs and, and doing this and that. And, and some of those groups ended up actually performing in front of the churches. But nice. uh, also in high school, I was doing so much writing that one of my teachers that was really into Cat Stevens was really digging a lot of this, this solo piano work that I was doing. And so I ended up, and I had written a lot of music already at that point in high school, enough probably for at least a couple records. And Jeez. she ended up having me perform in front of her class. And that ended up being in front of all of her classes. And that ended up, the word spread around to other teachers. And I performed in front of their classes. I ended up performing in front of the entire student body uh, basically at what age yeah in, in high school and oh, wow. then also in high school our church denomination the free methodist church was a huge denomination in lots of churches up in the pacific northwest and uh, our denomination had this huge church camp that was amazing it was it was beautiful it's like right on the water with a beautiful view and and cabins and lodges and it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger over the years Ended up now it has a retirement community and they have big Christmas events and all kinds of events. But we ended up putting on this musical uh, with the youth group called Show Me Jesus. And oh. I actually, and I was kind of shy. I was that violin kid, right? Right. So this is kind of when I was opening up and, and uh, kind of learning about myself. And I got the lead role of this kid that, so I acted and I sang Great. this <laughs> musical. And uh, yeah, so, and we ended up performing that in front of all the churches in the entire de denomination I, it ended up to be tens of thousands of people as i recall so Holy got a lot crap. of good experience in performing nice and early in high school in high school wow yeah. <laughs> right wow i mean what a way to start out you know yeah it's it's it, you can only you're not going to be shy anymore there's That's not going to be yeah, any yeah. stage well, fright course, you got over it church. I was performing in church my whole life. I was right. performing in orchestra and choir my whole life. So my whole life was just full of performance. So thank you very much, Mom and Dad. Thank oh, you, Mom exactly. and Dad, for all that training, that background, for paying for all those music lessons. And I'll tell you, oh, there was many yeah. years there that I think they were sorry about that. When I started becoming a professional musician and they're like going, yeah, well, how long are you going to be able to do that? You can't do that right. your whole life. What are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to do with your life? Exactly. exactly. Oh, rock. So, and yeah. now, now here I am. I've, it's there been a lifetime of it. And uh, it's gone hey, very, dude. very well for me. I've been very, very blessed over the years yeah. to be in a position to play with unbelievable artists. And we'll get to all that and how all that Unbelievable artists you've played with. I yes. mean, if <laughs> you go to your website, uh, go to your Facebook page, your, uh, your website, Greg foxmusic.com yeah and i went there and i you know you read the biography yeah. and i'm like and i'll i'll do it for every artist i, I love reading their biographies even if i haven't read yeah. it in a year i'll go back and read it again um <laughs> it's kind of like the liner notes on the web you know yeah, really right. exactly and you know yeah. i'm reading and i'm like man okay this guy I, I i've known of a few like asia and i i, I knew this stuff and but i'm like Iron Maiden. It says Iron Maiden. It, you, know, <laughs> you know, Iron yeah. Maiden, Heart, and Asia, and I, the list. Go, I could pull it up on my phone. I'd take a picture of it because I'd run out of ink writing it all down. But uh, I'm uh, like, uh, wow. Well, let's see. We'll start that out by going back to the Seattle days once again because being a, a huge part of the Seattle music scene, I ended up originally doing a lot of work with uh, – Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members from Heart, uh, Mike DeRozier on drums and Richard Fisher on guitar. And we had a band called Ten Bulls, which is this Zen story of the Ten Bulls. And, you know, and that was just an amazing experience for me to work with guys like that. And Roger's brother, Mike, 
you know, who is uh, a, a great producer and manager who originally got Heart signed on Mushroom Records back in the day. Right. So to work with that kind of talent and these kind of songwriters. So that was an experience where I really cut my teeth, not only performing with, with a great band that was producing great sounds off the stage, uh, but also developing, you know, we had this huge warehouse that was a recording studio and a warehouse. It was giant. It was like a, a sound stage in Bellevue. And we went to rehearsals, uh, you know, almost every night of the week, writing nice. music, recording music, practicing for shows. And so, yeah, I really learned a Dedication. lot. About, yeah, learned a lot about songwriting from working with Roger and, and Mike and uh, Mike DeRozier and, and yes. Michael Fisher. And so it's that good was company great, there. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great way to come up and a great, great experience. And, and that moved into other projects in the Northwest that uh, I was doing a lot of original work uh, with the Joseph Lee band up in the Northwest. Uh, I think Judy might be watching. Judy saw me, first of all, uh, one, one of my great friends for years and years from Seattle with the Joseph Lee band and, and uh, great, great songs on that uh, great melodic rock. And uh, some of that's available to hear on YouTube and things also. But oh, yeah. back in those days, back in those early days, I was still developing who I was as an artist. And, and what I really liked, you know, learning rock and roll, and that kept growing from, from this to that. The whole Zeppelin thing is a whole other story that we'll have, talk, have to talk about because I have some great stories about my experiences, wow. uh, you know, meeting some of the people in Led Zeppelin and, uh, and, and being on stage with Robert Plant. But uh, at the that holiest point, of holy. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, talk about the bucket list moment. But oh, so right. as as a violinist and this this orchestra kid and a pianist, uh, when I started really getting dubbing into rock and roll and finding out what I loved, of course, I went straight to prog rock, right? Keith Emerson, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Yes, my all time favorite band uh, to this very day. Yes. And um it was a huge bucket list thing to me. As a matter of fact, back in the high school days, when uh, when the Bee Gees were huge and, and Saturday Night Fever was the big thing. Oh, hell yeah. I was, I was so bourgeois about my prog rock that, you know, anybody that was into the Bee Gees, I, you know, I thought there was something wrong there. And the whole disco thing, I was very against that back in the day. It oh, had yeah. to be classical rock, you know. Uh, oh, real, it had to be. Real, real melodic the, music. The and, only uh, music. And I would tell people... Okay, we're gonna stick, we're gonna listen to close to the edge. And if this does not change your life, there's something wrong with you. You know, <laughs> <It's not laughs> wrong. You know there's something wrong with you, you'll never get it. But of course, right. over the years I've grown to really appreciate the Bee Gees music, the harmonies. And right. Stuff. And when I, we were younger, I, you know, it was hard. Yeah. You know, your buddies would get on your shit. They'd be like, yeah, oh, What are you course. listening to that for? <laughs> so you had to closetly listen to Prince and this <laughs> and that. But nowadays, you right. know, nowadays, Prince is regarded as way up there. And of course, I yeah. love his music. I've always loved his music. I performed a lot of his music back in the day, you know. Back right. in the day, I came up in, all in, you know, cover bands for years and years and years. Right. Great cover bands from one cover band to a better cover band to a better cover band. Until I finally, I was at the point that I started being in original bands. And, Right. And, you know, you just work your way up the ladder with your skills and your connections and your ability to perform. You know, it's it's I have people ask me a lot of questions about, you know, what advice would you give young artists? And it's important, you know, it's, and it's difficult in these days in some ways because it really is. A, a lot of people develop their craft only on social media and only in their little studio. So they don't develop any skills at actually performing in front of, in front of an audience. And, right. and that connection that you develop with the crowd, the ability to look at the crowd in their eyes and connect with them on a lot of different musical levels. Uh, right. To be able to perform in such a way that, that you develop excitement. Of course, every artist is going to be different, but that's right. it's so important to develop every aspect as an up-and-coming musician. Not only right. your skills to be able to perform, and to be able to write and to, to be able to record and, and record your own material, but to get out there in front of a crowd and, and really rock out and connect in whatever right. style you do. You know, not right. everybody rocks out. The whole world is not metal and there's a lot of great music out there, but you still have to be able to present it 
in a, in a very professional level. And it, it takes years, years of practice in front of crowds to really right. do that well. I was talking to Shez Kane. She's a, out of England. It's a new yeah. artist came out about a year ago. And right when her new album got released, it was the pandemic and everything was shut down and this and that. And I asked her, I said, well, why didn't you do any of the, she really didn't do any of the live streams that other artists were doing and, and, and perform right. that. And she, she said, there was no connection. I could not get the, you know, I'm going to sing and I'm not getting that connection with the audience to either the clap or the, the, the feedback. She goes, I can't do right. that. I, you know, yeah. so she's like, I, I, I need that live. I, I need the audience in front of me. I need that connection. And that absolutely. helps me perform. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely get that. And I, and I crave it. And COVID, right. COVID was very hard on artists that are used oh, to my performing God. all the time. Uh, of course, I used that time because I had no choice. I had to create some outlet for my artistry and my music. Right. So, of course, I wrote a new record and recorded <laughs> a record called A Song of Hope. And I yep. wrote it. Uh, originally, it was all written to inspire people and to give them strength to make it through COVID and to to know that we are all in this together, even though we're isolated and we're alone and we're going through hardships financially and, and losing loved ones and lots of things like that, that, that we are still all united. And music is a universal language that will bring us all together eventually. And in the line notes of that record, I talked about that, how I, you know, we will be all together again and we will all connect. But it's kind of interesting what happened with that record because the title track, A Song of Hope, is you can, of course, watch this on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify. We're on every digital streaming platform, whether it's Deezer. And I'm going to play it in a few minutes. Oh, good. Right on. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Now, the first single we released off that record is called In My Love and Arms, an amazing, amazing song. Oh, uh, wait, that's the one I'm going to play. Yeah, yeah, I think you're playing In My Love and Arms. In and My Love and Arms. Interesting story, but first of all, I'll talk, talk about a song of hope because... Uh, it's it's a bit of an epic prog piece. It's a little bit in the Kansas slash Emerson Lake and Paul oh, style. Yeah, absolute great song. So it has some really great acoustic and vocal things yes. to it. But it's been really interesting uh, as as life has gone on and COVID has opened up and we've gotten back to our world. And what's happened with uh, Ukraine and the Ukraine war? Right. Uh, because a lot of people started, the songs always... You know, originally with COVID, people were sending me emails saying the song has given me strength. I lost my mom and dad during COVID. And thank you so much. I listen to it every day. And people that have had a lot of loss, uh, you know, uh, lost their homes, trying to reconnoiter and kind of just uh, reconstruct their lives because of COVID. But when the war started happening, I realized, of course, that this, this was a song that could really help inspire the Ukrainian people because I really feel their pain deeply. And it seems at first, I know a lot of us did, but it seemed like nobody was doing anything about it. Exactly. And it really struck me hard. And, uh, you know, you sat here and you're like, why is nobody selling bombs at Russia? Why are we not doing it? You know, why are we letting this bully right. basically kick some kid around? Exactly. Yeah. And it just and broke my heart to see what it those did. people were going through. So I started putting it out on all my social media and YouTube. And, and actually, uh, through another great promoter gal of ours, Christina, we actually started sending it out to TV stations, news shows, charity groups and a lot of places they could use the song uh, in their stories and this and that. So people would hear it because uh, strangely enough, the lyrics seem to be so poignant uh, right. when it comes to inspiring the people of Ukraine and what they're going through. I and do, right. uh, so I ended up hooking up with a couple different charities like americares.org, uh, very transparent with, with where money goes and all of it goes to help people around the world and these days directly to ukraine and also samaritan's purse another charity group that we've kind of uh saddled our horse with a little bit to, right. to try to help them out so and you know and it it's it certainly hasn't gotten any better the whole war situation i mean putin has pretty much basically just destroyed you know a lot of the country destroying that country many of the major cities 
So if you can, please go to americares.org or Samaritan's Purse and give. They're very great organizations that are very transparent with where their money goes. And a large, large percent of actually goes to people that, that need help. But so, yeah, and go listen to A Song of Hope. Please spread the word on your social media. Share it Absolutely. from you. Absolutely. Uh, share it from YouTube and, and share it with people that are having difficult times in their lives because it right. will, uh, you know, I'm proud of the song. Uh, to me, as a songwriter, you always try to connect with people on some level. Right. And it can be difficult to do that because a lot of my music is uh, full of uh, people that are very, uh, they're virtuosos. There's, there's a lot of that, that neoclassical metal thing in there. So a lot of it is cerebral not only lyrically, but musically, it goes beyond a lot of what you're going to hear in mainstream rock. Right. Although, you know, there's times we just get down and we just rock out too. Right. But, uh, but so yeah, that's, that's there. Each, that particular each. song I'm very proud of uh, the A connection I can tell because people reach out to me and, and it has touched them emotionally a lot. It is a great song. I love that <laughs> song. And, uh, you know, I, I thought for sure, when I asked you which two which songs did you want to play, I thought for sure it was going to be that one. Wonderful. But you were I'm like, not, "I'm surprised I didn't." And I'll tell you, there's two. I reasons. mean, <laughs> there's two reasons I didn't suggest it. First of all, I wanted to make sure that everybody heard the single, our first single from our COVID release, "A Song of Hope," which is called "In My Love and Arms," In my and uh, it's just a very very powerful piece. So it seemed like a good way to introduce. Uh, exactly, Renaissance Rock Orchestra to your followers and your listeners. I, and I because totally it has agree. Everywhere, everything in it, you know, it's a little bit of a dream theater style. A right. Bit of, it has that classic rock sound of the eighties, yep. maybe a little Van Halen ish. That Maybe's. song uh, is uh, very interesting from a guitar sense because the guitar player on that song is Michael James Romeo from Symphony X. And Michael James Romeo has, uh, well, Burn Magazine said he says he's one of the top 10 metal guitarists of all time, right up there with Ingvay Malmsteen and, of course, uh, the list goes I on. Can, I can get behind that. Yeah, ab absolutely right. Yeah. And the song starts out with a flurrying guitar run that is very impressive. Right. And when it gets into the middle of the song and it goes into the guitar solo, Wow, it's 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 just brilliant. It's it's, it's brilliant. really very well done. So to have Michael James Romeo as a, as a part of Renaissance Rock Orchestra, as well as so many artists, is is it's just right. such a blessing. And it, and it takes my music to a whole different spot, a whole nother. Oh, yeah. And of course, uh, I should also announce Symphony X is actually out on tour right now. So uh, yeah, check check the Symphony X page and find out where they're playing and and go say hello to to Michael James Romeo. Uh, He's a brilliant songwriter. He right. does a lot of work for film and movies. And I'll tell you, his movie soundtrack stuff is just brilliant. So oh yeah, it's exciting to have him involved in the project because on that level, as things proceed forward, we believe that uh, having Michael James Romeo as a producer and co-writer with me is going to also take our material to a, to a whole nother level. So very, very proud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, since we're talking about it, let's <laughs> stop right here, take a little break. Yeah, yeah, play, uh, play uh, um, in my love arms. In my love and arms. Beautiful, I love it. So yeah, we will do this. Now, now yeah. let me tell you a little bit about this video before we play it. Uh, okay, because this is from the YouTube, I believe. Yes, and this was the very first YouTube video that I created. Uh, so it's, it's it's like a lyric video, and I'm usually just pictures of the band. It's not any live footage, but you know it's right. done pretty well. I think it's gotten like forty thousand plus views. Yes. And uh, so I wanted I mean, you to uh, to to share that one just because it had so many views and this and that. But I have several different versions out there on YouTube. So please go to YouTube. And everybody, when you go to YouTube, please subscribe. You know, subscribe. We just started our YouTube channel this year, so it's so difficult to gain traction and to gain followers right. and to get into the realm where it needs to be. You know, which is up in that fifty to hundred thousand followers minimum. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's growing. So please Got subscribe that. when you go to the YouTube. I think subscribe. we have 150 videos there to, to watch. And a lot yeah. of it is live footage, like with Robin McCauley from McCauley Shanker right. and the Michael Shanker group and, and Survivor and, and Mark Bowles from mm -hmm. uh, Ingvay Malmsteen, Ted okay. Nugent Dawkins singing. You know, we have videos with Tony Harnell. 
uh, from TNT. There's a lot of great, great stuff to go see on our YouTube videos, but oh, now okay. in my loving arms. In my loving arms. Enjoy. All right. Rocky. We'll be right back.
Great song. Yeah, thank you very much. Mike. Great song. Now, who's the players on that? Because I know you've got a lot of players. So yes, exactly. With that, and on so that song. for that record, a song of hope. By the way, here's the CD. And yes. uh, if anybody wanted a copy of the CD, you could just direct message me on any social media on Renaissance Rock Orchestra on Facebook on Greg Fox Music. That's Greg Fox, two G's, as you'll see here at the bottom of, of your screen. Two G's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, send copies. One out. X. Of course, it's on all streaming platforms, too. So you can buy it on Apple Music, on iTunes. And uh, yeah, so please uh, go do buy that. Buy the physical copy. Yes, it's uh, having that in your hands is, is a very cool thing. And, and there's a nice best. booklet inside, too, that tells about the songs and has the lyrics and, and explains all the members in the band. I took a little bit different... Uh, different approach to this record our second record i'll talk about for just a second our second record is a, a record called in times of old and on in times of old because of my experiences when i first moved to las vegas i was doing a lot of shows with a lot of major rock stars i was in a show here in town called the rock gods hall of fame and got to perform with uh, people from ACDC and Guns N' Roses and Black Sabbath and just an amazing list of people, Michael Anthony from Van Halen. And a lot yeah. of these people uh, were hearing about Renaissance Rock Orchestra and I invited them to be on that record in times of old. So that record, our second record, which you can find everywhere also, has 27 rock stars on it. Uh, it includes two Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members. It has Howard Lease from Hearts on guitar and, and from Paul Rogers also, uh, and wow. he's on the record. And it also has Alan White, the drummer from Yes. And so for me, that was a huge bucket that list. Was, oh my God, that was like everything to you right there. Yeah, exactly. So that was a big, big moment having Alan White uh, be on one of my records and, and everybody that was, was on that record. It has nine different drummers that, that include uh, Vinny Apice from uh, Dio and Black Sabbath. Simon Ryan from ACDC, Roxy Petrucci from Vixen, Alan Love her. Ben Smith from Heart, Brent Fitz from Alice Cooper and Slash. So some amazing drummers on that record. It's a great, <sighs> great record to, to go check out. That and, is amazing. Uh, on the song that Alan played on, it's a song that uh, Robin McCauley did the vocals. Robin McCauley from Michael Shanker. He's going to be out with Michael Shanker again this year for yep. Shanker Fest. And, and uh, from the Macaulay Shanker group from back in the days, MSG, uh, such a, a brilliant voice. I and, love and that group. Very, very instrumental in, in helping launch Renaissance Rock Orchestra originally. He was on our first two records, did multiple tracks on uh, the record In Times of Old, our second record. But on uh, A Song of Hope, I decided that I wanted to take a little bit of, of a different approach. I wanted to help start developing uh, who Renaissance Rock Orchestra is and, and who we were going to be live because a lot of times it's very difficult to get this this list of players and rock stars all together. To oh share. my God, yeah. Their schedules, their tours, etc. So I knew I kind of needed to have a, a kind of a, a backup a group. group. Yeah, that was going to be the group. So So I ended up on the album having the same players play all the songs, mostly. There's a couple exceptions for that. So that amazing voice you heard on In My Love and Arms, Mark Bowles, yes. is, is our, our main live vocalist. And he did every track on A Song of Hope. And wow, what great. a voice, right? He's got a great voice. I met, you know, when he was with Nugent, I, you know, I loved him then. And Nugent, just, Dawkin, and of course, he was the singer on the Trilogy album with Malmsteen. Malmsteen arguably yeah. the finest Malmsteen record I, that's my favorite. A lot of people think, and, and he sang that entire record. That's but I also, uh, if you look at the bottom of your, of your screen there, Mike, you can see the whole lineup that, uh, that is kind of a part of the band, uh, except for one exception. Uh, Brian Tishy did all the drums, and Brian and I do a lot of work together, not only in Renaissance Rock Orchestra, but we have a Led Zeppelin all-star tribute show called the Moby Dicks. The Moby Dicks! The Moby Dicks, yeah. I love it. Very, we just did a show last weekend at the big rock club here in Las Vegas called Vamped. Vamped. Uh, owned by Danny and Corey Coker. You know, Danny, uh, the Count. Count 77. Count and the TV show Counting Cars. Yep. And so we played there Friday and Saturday. And I'll tell you, man, it's so cool that at, at my age, I still get to go out there and play some of my all-time favorite music, uh, Led Zeppelin. And in right. that, you know, we have Brian Tishy on drums and 
who in my opinion is like the living reincarnation of John Bonham. You know, he, he just, he plays with that power that almost yep. everyone can do like, like Bonham plays. And, yep. and uh, in that band, we have Phil Suzanne on bass from Ozzy and Chaz West sings. And Chaz, of course, was in the band Bonham. Yeah. He's one of my, heard. dude, that dude is so unknown this guy should be ultra famous for his vocals. He is an amazing yeah, he's so vocalist. Good. There is was unbelievable. There's a YouTube video of the band Bonham with Jason Bonham on drums, of course, and Chaz singing, doing Stairway to Heaven. That's, My uh, God. Not, it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and it's, it, it was filmed somewhere in Europe, I believe, and I can't remember where, so you can find it on YouTube. But you'll find it in... And... and he does such a great job seeing that that is comparable to any performance that Plant ever did of Stairway to Heaven. It's so, it's so, so good. good. So it's an honor to play with those guys in the Moby right. Dicks. But uh, to have Brian uh, drumming for me in Renaissance Rock Orchestra is, has always been great. And, and him and I also do a lot of other shows together that he produces, like the Bonzo Bass Show, which we do at NAMM every year, take COVID out of the picture, but right. uh, did that several years with, with Brian out there at the NAMM show and here in Las Vegas. And the great thing about Bonzo Bash is it's all about Led Zeppelin music and about John Bonham. So I get to perform with some of the finest drummers in the world from every famous band and it goes, goes on for hours. It's an amazing thing to witness. But Brian also has a, a show that he produces called Randy Rose Remembered. And in Randy Rhodes Remembered, I get to perform with Brian and with uh, some of the finest, and with Chaz. Chaz is the singer yes. for Randy Rhodes Remembered. But uh, we play with the finest guitar players in the world. So, uh, yeah, so those kind of events, when you go see those, it's pretty amazing to see so many amazing guitar players, uh, world famous guitar players. players, rock star guitar players, Joel I Hoekstra, mean, uh, oh. Randy Rhodes Remembered with us. Uh, Bumblefoot has done some shows Dude. with us, and Bumblefoot also plays guitar on my second record in Times of Old on a song called My Lonely Heart. Check that out. My Lonely Heart, amazing song. The guitar solo from Bumblefoot is just crazy on that song. My Lonely Heart, that's on YouTube. Okay. So, but yeah, so for this record, uh, Brian mm -hmm. plays the drums, Mark Bowles does all the vocals. Uh, on guitar, as you know, we already talked about Michael James Romeo, who did three songs, but then he got involved in some film work to to do the entire record. So I brought in Christian Brady from Hell Yeah to do the guitar, and he nice. does brilliant work. Uh, and Tony Alleman from Rats and from his original band, Vile of Sin. So we have three different guitar players on A Song of Hope, and they all have different styles. Uh, right, Tony and they Alleman mess well. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool to hear the different songs and the different styles um, on uh, A Song of Hope. Christian Brady plays and Tony Allman plays. Tony does kind of the shredding, uh, fast uh, neoclassical work. Christian Brady does a lot of brilliant melodic, uh, David Gilmore-ish type work. And there's another song on the record that Christian plays on that's called The Universal Dance. It's kind of my homage to Yes!, but it has a kind of a Pink Floydish style to it also. And Christian just killed on the, the David Gilmore blues-ish, very, uh, very moving guitar work. So uh, listen to that. But also uh, you'll see at the bottom of this page that Tony Franklin is listed because this poster we're showing here is from uh, our show that we did last year uh, here in Las Vegas on uh, Fremont Street at a club called Notoriety. And this is the band that I used live for that show. On the record for bass, I brought in Greg Smith. Now, Greg Smith uh, is is on the new Ted Nugent record. He's done work with Ted Nugent for years, but he also worked with Alice Cooper. He's done work with Alan Parsons, Rainbow, Billy Joel, and Greg Smith. It goes, um, it goes, it goes yeah, on and on. He did all. <laughs> He did all the work on the record and his brilliant bass work. Kind of an interesting story about that, too, because uh, when I started this project, my best friend and uh, my bass player on the first two records, mostly, is uh, my best friend, Mikey Bones, Michael Gerbino. And Michael, unfortunately, passed away in 2017. But one of Michael's great friends was Greg Smith for many, many years. 
And when, uh, when Mikey Bunks passed away, Mikey's widow, Tracy, gave uh, some of uh, Mikey Bones' basses to Greg Smith. So on the record, oh, wow. Greg Smith used Mikey Bones' uh, his basses to perform with on the record. So it was uh, a really a, a great thing to bring Greg in as, as family and a great dear friend and such a talent. He did, did such a great job on the record. So thank you, Greg, for that. Really appreciate you, and I can't wait to bring you into the live show at some point. There's going to be a lot of those coming up. But for now, the live show, uh, we were so blessed to have Tony Franklin come in and play bass with us. And Tony, of course, is from Blue Murder. And oh, yeah. A great band, Blue Murder, amazing material. And also from The Firm, um, mm -hmm. you know, had huge hits with Paul Rogers and Chris Slade in The Firm. Uh, on songs like Radioactive, uh, great, great work that they did on, on that particular record. So it's just amazing the names you have yeah. involved in this. It is like I, I've been very, very wow. Impressed. Yeah. So uh, and Tony did a brilliant job live, and to work with him has been a great experience. He has continued on to start doing uh, more work with us on our fourth record, which we're writing in recording now so i have tony on one track on that and uh he's he's, he's so down to earth and uh, mm. tony's a very zen kind of personality so he's great to have around and to work with on writing material but live it was so nice to work with him too because uh, oh yeah it could be it could be kind of stressful getting things together for some of the big shows we do and and to have him kind of make everything mellow and and keep me at peace because I'm freaking out going we need to do nice. this we need to do that but <laughs> no you you're the mastermind Tony trying to keeps, ah. Tony right. Franklin kind of keeps me centered and balanced and right. uh, so thank you Tony I appreciate now that. have you taken this on the road I know it's it's in Vegas. But we I, have I, at I, this point only done shows in Vegas. We have not really taken it on the road, that's but I uh, I definitely see that happening in the near future for a lot of reasons. We we got some really great news this week uh, from from our some of our investment group people, and uh, I have a a great friend who has supported me over the years, uh, and I've always had really brilliant success when it comes to investors helping out this project and i'll and i'll mention right now mike and karen catania who uh were our first investors that really helped us do the first two records and our first few shows nice so i'm very grateful to them for for really helping out in a big way in a big big way to, to get us rolling and and now we have another great friend and investor rick brent who is a nascar guy and and nice. uh, justin algar drives for him and he's down in Brazil right now doing some, some NASCAR races down there. But so we're really looking forward to this partnership growing with uh, with Rick Bratz, who has always supported. Uh, he helped uh, was a major supporter in, in helping me finish uh, A Song of Hope and, and get it recorded nice. and, and mixed and mastered like people by uh, uh, that record was was mastered, by the way, by Brian Maloof, who has done work with Fleetwood Mac and. Madonna, hmm. and he also mastered the Live at Wembley Queen record. Right, right. that's so right. Yeah, that's part. Of, that's, that's part of why that record sounds so good. Besides the right. brilliant talent and and hopefully the songwriting on my part, but but having people like Brian Maloof uh, uh, work on our it don't hurt. Yeah, it don't hurt. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It does not hurt at all. Right, because but so yeah, so I kind of have a big announcement. Uh, for your show that I haven't really announced to anybody else yet. And that is, and this is, this is kind of an interesting story because when I first started developing the concept of uh, Renaissance Rock Orchestra, I was living out in Venice Beach, California. I had for years before that, I had gotten out of rock and roll. I thought rock and roll was dead. And I had bought right. a sailboat and I sailed around the Bahamas for like seven years. Not a bad gig. Yeah, not a bad gig. It was a great <laughs> growing experience for me in a lot of ways. And I learned a lot of things about what I wanted to do musically before going on the sailing trip. I had I was kind of hanging on coattails, you know, working with people from Hearts or Queensryche or whatever it might be. And uh, so that, that sailing experience changed me and, and I developed a, 
a driving passion to do my own music and to right. do this symphonic metal thing because of my classical background and experience right. and the way I play. And sometimes that's what you need to, to get in touch with who you are and what you actually want to do. It's, it's true. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that really changed me a lot. And wow, what an amazing experience it was for seven years. But, but then I think about where I might be now if I hadn't spent that time out of the music industry because I got off the sailboat. I immediately moved to Venice Beach, California, and I wasn't there uh, 90 days and foreigner asked me to go out on tour with them. Now, right. I did not go out and do that tour. They ended up having Balloon Sign do it, and he's been with them for years now, and more power to him. And he felt kind of bad about that at the time because he was like, going, Greg, I shouldn't have this gig. You're the real rock star. Oh, my God. I, I feel well, so bad. I'd go out and see Foreigner shows with Michael Plain, and it was kind of a funny thing. He, he felt he's, he's very, very bad. Good. He ended up getting the gig because of his connections and friendships that he already had. But it turned out to be very good for me to uh, to force me into developing the Renaissance Rock Orchestra. Exactly. But, so when I left Venice Beach, California, uh, Mikey Bones, who had been living in Phoenix, and him and I were in a band called Superhero in Phoenix back in the day that was like an amazing, amazing cover band. This was before I bought the sailboat and rock and roll was dead. But uh, so Mikey- Rock's moved, not dead. Yeah, I know. Yeah, It's just getting better all the time. I love it. And exactly. So he had moved to Las Vegas, but I was bringing him out to Venice Beach, California, and we were writing and recording songs that would end up becoming uh, Renaissance Rock Orchestra. And so I'd come back to Las Vegas, and he knew everybody because he's from Queens, and so he knew knows all those East Coast guys. Whether you're talking uh, Satriani or Vi or Bon Jovi, and he grew up in that whole scene, and so they all knew him. So. Um, Mikey Bones helped out a lot on the first two records, bringing in a, a lot of great rock star names, people I didn't know. Uh, Roxy Petrucci would be one of those for sure. So I uh, haven't heard drama on a song that Robin McCauley sang on called To Be With You was, was another great, great thing. But so I came out here to Las Vegas. And we started talking about me moving here and, and putting a show together. But so when I first moved out here, we would go out and we would see Trans-Siberian Orchestra shows. Beautiful. Yeah, I fell in love with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra thing because I'd go out to these shows and I'd see tens of thousands of people and little kids. Uh, and they were packing these, these places in Las Vegas. And the kids, it was their very first rock show and they were so excited about it. And I kept looking at it going, wow, you know, I love this. I could do this. I could write that kind of material. And so hence the concept of Renaissance Rock Orchestra was born. But I've always told people from the start that if they ask what Renaissance Rock Orchestra is, I say, take Trans-Siberian Orchestra, take out the Christmas, and add rock stars. Right. So the concept has always been from the start to have a revolving door of rock stars. Well, over the years, that's changed a little bit since I've developed this, this core band mentality for a while. But I believe as it grows, when we start to go out and do festivals in Europe and South America and Japan, uh, that we will get back to this uh, revolving rock star thing. You know, I, I still look forward to the day that on stage we'll, we will have Michael James Romy on guitar and, and Bumblefoot on guitar. And we will have... Robin McCauley singing and Mark Bowles singing and Tony Harnell singing all on stage during the same show. Right. So, but trying to, you know, time everything with everybody else's thing because everybody's doing like multiple gigs now, multiple okay. bands, super yeah. groups and this and that. And everybody's and some of these bands will never tour. And it's like, man, sure. you know, right. but if you're on tour with RRO and taking it to a certain city and say yeah. hoaxers with white snake, a, a city across the street, boom, he stops yeah. by jams a little bit yeah. and off, you know, so it might yeah. be a here and there kind of thing. You never know who's going to show up. It'd be perfect. Absolutely. We will be able to develop a, develop schedules that work out for their touring schedules. Or if we get large enough, we're doing well enough doing some European ginormous festivals. We'll just take, take everybody and say this, this is it's what we're good. doing this summer. This is what we're doing this summer. So you got to think big, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. So the big announcement is this: over the years, as I first started developing this, I used a Trans Siberian Orchestra template for what Renaissance Rock Orchestra was without the Christmas. 
So our first record, which was an EP, really had four neoclassical metal pieces that were instrumental and, and one song that had vocals, and that was Robin McCauley singing. Right. But so I've decided, I've gotten so much excitement from my management company, from all my different agents, all of our financiers to, uh, to put together a Christmas show. I kind of, oh, wow. this year I decided that, you know, with a lot of things still going on with COVID and the fact that we're an unbranded, unknown name, a lot of venues have a problem with marketing that and I have a problem right. with that. So I decided, well, let's write a Christmas record. Let's do a Christmas show this year. And uh, so I've spent the last five months, uh, a Christmas has not died for me this year. I've been doing nothing but writing <laughs> Christmas songs, recording Christmas songs. So we're uh, we're putting that all together. Nice. And so we're definitely going to go out and do a Christmas show this year. We've gotten approval on the financing, and I've brought in a couple new partners in Renaissance Rock Orchestra. So I'm happy to, to announce it's very likely that you might have a chance to see us. We don't know how big the tour is. I know we're going to do some shows in California. I know we're going to do some uh, some shows here in Las Vegas. Uh, it looks like our, our our investor wants us to definitely go out to uh, Springfield, Illinois. So oh. uh, so it looks like we'll definitely be doing a show. Uh, possibly, I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. We haven't done the routing, but the second Friday in December, Springfield, Illinois, Christmas Rocks by Renaissance Rock Works. That's the name of the Christmas show. Rocks. Christmas Rocks. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I yeah, dig it. so so we're gonna do it. We're gonna bring uh, keep Christmas cool. alive and and uh, do the Renaissance Rock Orchestra version of the Christmas show. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that Trans Siberian Orchestra thing. Uh, and I finished uh, our version of Carol of the Bells, which uh, is is quite different than TSO's. It's a little more complex, a little little in some ways heavier. But I also have a lot of uh, Renaissance Rock Orchestra originals that we'll be doing. We'll be doing them about half the show uh, in originals and TSO style music. And the other half of the show is going to be Renaissance rock orchestra styled versions of known songs, such as, let's see, we're, we're actually going to do a version of All I Want for Christmas. Oh, wow. Kind of the Mariah Carey show, but a right. version of that song. But I started it with a very orchestrated TSO thing. And then Mark Bowles comes in and we kind of go into a metal slash TSO slash My Chemical Romance version of the song. Oh, wow. Which is very cool. We're going to do other songs like uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Kind of nice. a uh, rock orchestra slash Bruce, Bruce Springsteen version. We're going to do Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. I think I kind of took the Helix version of that and did our own arrangements. I have this really cool arrangement of uh, Run, Run Rudolph Run, which is, of course has been done by Brian Adams, by, yes. uh, by who else? Uh, Carol, Carol, uh, Cheryl Crow, okay. uh, the Foo Fighters. Um, oh, Lemmy, right, did, Lemmy did a version of Run Rudolph Run. So I kind of took yes. all that together and I blended it with the ELO version of um, Roll of Beethoven. So it starts oh, wow. off with this orchestration version of the Fifth Symphony, and then it breaks into Run Rudolph Run, and then it goes back into the ELO version of of uh, Roll Over Beethoven. It goes back into Run Rudolph Run. So it's going to be really, really cool. That will probably be the closer of the show. You have my interest, per. Uh, yeah, it's going <laughs> to be a great record. It's going to be a very. very I, I, I love spins on, yeah. on, on, on you know, when people yeah. do. Uh, a remake, they kind of try to stay really true to the original. And it's like, yeah, no, no, if you're going to remake yeah. something, just revamp it and put it yeah. out there. It, it, not necessarily, you know, like say Def Leppard, Pyromania, don't do that. But like a, yeah. a, a Christmas song, nail it, rock it, yeah. kill it, yeah. jingle bells with and a make it, flare. And make it your own. And make right. it your own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I see the jingle bells I'm, done. That was like killer guy doing it's, drums and just amazing. Oh, cool. And I'm like, I want to do that. And it's, you know, yeah. that's what I want to see. And our version of All I Want for Christmas, which starts out very Renaissance Rock Orchestra, Trans Siberian Orchestra ish, 
very symphonic, and then it goes into this heavy metal, uh, our version of it. And in the middle of that, we go into Jingle Bells. Now, right. it's just like for one short verse, verse, and on the way out, I kind of take it into this prog world thing where we start doing kind of these yes breaks and Mark Bowles goes into this new material on Jingle Bell. So you'll dig that, Mike. You'll oh, wow. That. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to this. This is just, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm going to have to, you know, once I get the dates, I'm going to have to see, uh, hey, honey, get me some uh, plane tickets. <laughs> I need to go here. I need to go there. We'll find okay. where. Or babe. One yeah. of the two. You either, I'll either get you here or I'll, I'll go there. You know? Uh, <laughs> hey, Whatever give me works. I'm going to close. I live in Las Vegas, everybody. And of course, hey. it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here. And so I usually have my door open and I'm enjoying the sunshine. And oh, the hell yeah. And uh, this time of day, a lot of the, I don't know if you've been able to hear it, but a it's lot of the a flights bit. are flying out. It's a little bit noisy. It's all right. It hasn't been that bad. I mean, Yeah, so, yeah, I'm I'm peaked about this. This sounds really cool. I mean, oh, it's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. As a matter of fact, we've been trying to get it all together, you know, to to really pitch it right to the venues around the country. Um, right. You need to have some kind of video content to do that. Exactly. So, so we're taking this into uh, a place here in Las Vegas, and I'll give them a, a little mention and shout out as long as we're. We're talking about this. Oh, we're going to be doing a video. It looks like uh, early June. And we're a little bit late on it, but it's taken me a, a while to write and record and arrange this and try to get everybody's schedules together to try to do a video shoot. Oh, but my imagine. partner in the uh, in the Christmas show, one of my partners, one of my new partners is, is Mark Bratton, a drummer that's in a band called Foundry with my singer Mark Bowles. And they do a lot of they do a lot of shows here in town. They've opened up for bands like Godsmack and and uh, let's see who else. Uh, I think they opened up for Night Ranger. There's been a couple other things they've done. And Mark's a great drummer. But he just uh, he just bought and partnered up with uh, a guy by the name of Michael Gillies, who is the, the guy that engineered every Metallica album since the Black Album. Oh, wow. And they bought a church in the Fremont area of Las Vegas, down by Fremont Street. And they have turned it into a recording studio called the Sonic Temple. And they I think it, I have heard of this. Have you? Yeah. They've I think into, I've heard this. They've turned it into the, the, the newest hi-fi thing available, Dolby Atmos. And as a matter of fact, they're going to be uh, remixing the entire Metallica catalog in Dolby Atmos at the Sonic Oh, Temple. wow. So, yeah, if you need to record, Dang. they come to Las Vegas to do it in a really awesome retro church. right? Dude, that would be cool. That's very, very cool. So That would be cool. That's where we're going to do our video at, and cool. we're going to shoot the video there, and we'll be recording it in that studio. So it's, it's a live recording of the show. We'll be doing three songs, and so I'm excited to get that done. So we have our work cut out to prepare and rehearse. You only so, got a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're only a couple <laughs> of weeks out on that. I also want to mention another new partner that we brought into the Renaissance Rock Horse that I'm very excited about, and uh He's uh, just a brilliant guy to work with on a business level and an entertainment level. Uh, his name is Brian Parisi. Brian is the ex-CFO of Live Nation. He's also, uh, he was the SVP, I believe, uh, of Warner Brothers Entertainment, their, their movie division for years. So he has a lot of experience in not only finance and, uh, and doing shows, but uh, the entertainment business in general. And uh, Brian is the head of a new venue out in California in the Riverside Norco area. I, it's currently called the Silver Lakes uh, Sports Complex and Equestrian Complex. Equestrian. And they just did it. Horses. They, yeah, horses. And they just did a show there with Tim McGraw several weeks back. That I think they had like 15,000 people for that show. And oh, so wow. we're going to be doing a lot of shows at I, that particular in that area uh, as the year progresses and next year also, but they're building a Christmas village over there too. So Brian has expressed interest in having us come out and do some kind of residency out there in his Christmas village. So probably, hopefully one night a week, you'll be able to see a Renaissance rock orchestra Christmas rocks 
in the Riverside, Norco, California area. We'll also be taking it out to do some performing arts centers and theaters in California for sure. I know that Mark Bratton is uh, going to be pitching it to a lot of venues in the Midwest. So we're going to be heading a lot of different directions with the Christmas show. So there should be a lot of chances for you to see the schedule and decide whether you want to come to Las Vegas, whether you want to come to California, whether you want to see us close to you somewhere in the Midwest or Illinois, Springfield, Illinois, maybe. Oh, I lost you. I lost the sound. What happened? I muted myself. Oh, you did? I do, ah. that. I, I do that every now and then, so I don't, yeah. And then I always get told, hey, well, what's going on? Yeah, it's because I forget. <laughs> I get excited. I know. But ah. get out there, go to shows, support it, buy the buy the CD, buy the, uh, the, the physical copies. You know what? Um, you, like, I should mention also real quick, if you will, please, if you guys go to YouTube and you go to Spotify and you like what you hear, uh, I'm sure, sure it. you okay, will. When you do that, please uh, go to our, our new merch store. We have a line of about 50 products so far that is everything from hats to T-shirts to, to, uh, to koozies to tumblers to sandals to hoodies, uh, a lot of really keychains, right. magnets, posters, and they're all available at streamlabs.com forward slash Renaissance Rock Orchestra forward slash merch i know it's long hey, but i usually do it. yeah streamlabs.com forward slash renaissance rock orchestra forward slash merch and of course mm -hmm. that link is available everywhere on all of our social media right. on our facebook on our instagram on our youtube any of our videos you'll find all of our link to go to our merch right. store and we also have a, a link tree um place you can go that, that has links to everywhere from Apple tunes to iTunes to Spotify to the merch store to the Facebook to the Instagram and the easiest yeah. place to go find that is on Instagram really go to uh, Renaissance Rock Orchestra on Instagram and in our bio you'll see a link to our link tree yep. which which sends you everywhere so that's that's yep. the easy way yeah and then you know, tomorrow when the when I either tomorrow or Saturday when I do I, I usually make up a post and I'll, I'll put like all kinds of links in it, merch links, YouTube links, Spotify links, you know, Facebook links, you know, whatever, website link. I try to make it real easy for people to, you know, once once this is over, they're looking to, okay, where's it at? And right. bam, I try to hit them with, you know, here's everything just so you can find it. Oh, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I found and, hey, we're gonna we're gonna be putting this interview on our YouTube too. I know they'll be able to go find it at your sites, but you'll also be able to find it on uh, Renaissance Rock Works right at YouTube. And of course, I'll have all of uh, yeah. Rockin' with B Rock's links there too. Yeah, yeah, baby. I heard that guy's got a cool. We're on. Heard, it. We are connected. We're connected. Uh -huh. Hell yeah! We'll have to have you back um, after everything starts shaking out with yeah. um, what's going on. You're not well, allowed you know, to do anything. You can promise you. We really didn't get into too many of my stories because yeah. we're talking about the project overall. But yeah. I got I got four more shows with you to try oh, to get all my dude. rock and roll stories. You don't want to you don't want to fill one show up. You, you, you come back and then you share some stuff that's uh -huh. going on with RRO, and that's then we'll get brother. into some more star stories, and then share some more. Every time, hey, there's a reason for you to come back. You gotta hit me up and say, hey, there's a reason that's for me good. to come back. Let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and I'll have you back. I have no problem with that. Anytime people want to come on, they just nice. let me know, hit me up, and I make room for them, and bam. Cool. Are you going to play one more Renaissance Rock Orchestra? I am going to play one more. See, you are way ahead of the game here, man. <laughs> You're on this, it today. This ain't my first rodeo, brother. This <laughs> is the Greg Buck show. He's running shit around here today. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Let me tell Dude, you. Dude, you got about it. The song. the song we're going to hear is a kind of a staple of our discography, and it's one of the. It's it's a favorite of people. Uh, the two songs I'm going to mention, one is called J.S. Rock, which is an instrumental song that uh, I took uh, a Bach piece, an invention of his, that was like a minute and a half, and I turned it into this neoclassical thing. So go watch J.S. Rock. But the song we're going to play today is called The Author of Mystery. It was on our second record, 
It's sung by Robin McCauley. The vocals are amazing. Robin. On this record, we have Brian Tishy playing the drums. We have Robin McCauley on vocals. We have Steve Connolly from Flotsam and Jetsam doing all of the, the bass, uh, excuse me, all the rhythm guitars. Mikey Bones, my best friend, rest in peace, playing bass. But the guitar solo is George Lynch. Mm, the God have, himself. Yes, Mr. Scary. One of the gods. Mr. Scary, yeah, right. Mr. Lynch Mob, Mr. Dawkins. So uh, that's uh, the author of Mystery. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. Okay, hey, uh, like I said, whenever you want to come back, I'd love let to. Let me know and uh, just hit me up. I'm sure Tabitha, me, me and her, keep in touch. She's great, great. Keep her around. She's got your thank you again. She's Tabitha. got your back. Got we love your Tabitha. back. You yes. rock. She is a fantastic human being. She's you hot too, isn't she? Ah, uh, yeah. It's kind of <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. She's in here somewhere. <laughs> I, I saw her earlier, but she's going to be like, oh my God, she's blushing right now. You know how to. But <laughs> I um, so. yes, I will get a hold of her. I'll keep in touch with her and I will have you back. Definitely. Well, You're thanks. not allowed to do anything. I want you focused on that because you got a few weeks to get their videos done yeah. and get them out so that you get on the road. And then Absolutely. I expect to hear from you on how well things are going. I'll get you back on the Absolutely. show. You Very got it, nice Thank you so much. Very it's been nice so great meeting meet. you. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll have to meet uh, in person sometime and uh, just hang out. Thanks, what, everybody. Uh, Thanks for uh, watching. Go subscribe. Go watch. Subscribe. Go Buy the merch. All right, brother. You have a great night. And we're going to do, right. do the... We are going to do the author of mystery right now. So enjoy the show. Uh, uh, show. Enjoy the song. Thank you so much for being here. Greg was a absolute perfect guest, man. I love people that want to talk, want to share everything, and I can make four or five different shows out of it. He's going to be back. Another uh, a Christmas show he's working on. Can't wait for that. And some of his spins on some of the tunes. That's going to be fantastic, dude. you got to be kidding me. I love that kind of shit. So I will post all the links tomorrow. I'll try to get to it tomorrow. I should be able to get to it tomorrow. I'll post all the links, merch links, sites, everything you need to know, everywhere you need to be to learn more about RRO, Renaissance Rock Orchestra. Orchestra is hitting really big right now with like Symphony X kind of got the ball rolling and TSO, but there's other things going on in Europe here. Uh, you know, once you go down that wormhole, man, you're going to find a lot. And Renaissance Orchestra, uh, Rock Orchestra is one of the ones that is out there pretty much in front of everybody. So I will see you next week. Next week I have Rick Roll from Every Mother's Nightmare going to be joining us. Be at um, Masquerade in Philadelphia in July, but we get to sit down and talk to him. Great guy. Can't wait to have a little chat with him. But in the meantime, have a great week. Make sure you check out the radio show on Wednesdays, 1 to 3, Toxic Radio. Uh, so let's get right to the song, and I will see you next week.
with me.